So, yep, I will take this. Uh, I have a question for you first. Uh, uh, I would like to know who is uh, uh, not an English native speaker? Say hi. Okay. Uh, for, for those who wonder, I'm speaking English right now. <laughs> so the session will be in English. I, I think so. It's okay for you? <laughs> okay. So let's start. We are, uh, I'm uh, Alexis Monville and... Uh, I'm Frédéric Lepier, so uh, VP of Software Engineering at Innovance. And I'm working on uh, Agile. Uh, the, the company, uh, the mission of the company is to build uh, open cloud infrastructure. And uh, we are now uh, 120. Uh, we were 20% uh, 20, 20 uh, one, uh, one, uh, one, one, one year and a half ago. <laughs> uh, so we are a fast growing company and we, are, we decided to grow the company uh, in, a, in an agile way. So without uh, bureaucracy and uh, hierarchy. Uh, so we will, we will talk more about this uh, in a few minutes. Uh, if you want to tweet about the session, uh, we will be really happy about that. And if you want to, to continue the conversation after the session, it will, it will be nice also. So, let's start. Uh, what is Agile? Uh, I, I think you all, you, you've all heard about Agile. Um, like some uh, of you, maybe you, you've tried to be Agile sometimes. I know it's, it's, kind, uh, it's kind of difficult sometimes. Uh, um, we will go uh, rapidly to what is Agile and what is Scrum. We are using uh, Scrum inside the, uh, the, the company. Uh, here are the, the, the Scrum values. Uh, you will hear a lot about values when you are speaking about Agile and uh, a lot about practices. Uh, there's a difference between uh, values and practices. Uh, some values here are, are important for me. The focus, uh, work on one thing at a time, so you will be uh, uh, really uh, focused on it and you will be best, better to, to work on it. Um, respect for people, respect for others, and uh, enabling collaboration between people, it, it, it's really important for us. So I will not go through the rest, but I will uh, say, read the, read the Agile Manifesto, uh, read the Scrum values, and we, you will learn a lot about, uh, about this. It can be inspiring for, for you. Perhaps you can ask uh, who is doing uh, some Scrum? Maybe. Yeah. Say hi. Wow. OK. We will go fast on this. So it's the Scrum framework. We all do this. So it's OK. It's all building a, a present for your users. So it's this set of practices. Uh, iteration, you, you, you need feedbacks from your users so you can adapt the, the, the product you're, you're, bit, you're, you're building for, for them. Okay, <laughs> you're still learning. We, we are still learning also, so it's, it's okay. So agile practices uh, values face-to-face uh, -face conversation, face-to-face -face interaction. It's really important. Agile practices uh, values uh, daily stand-up on, uh, on in front of a board that's showing your your advancement, your 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 progress on uh, on developing something. Uh, agile practices uh, value retrospective. You need to take some time to reflect on on your practices to uh, improve your way of working. And the, the, the picture is uh, from uh, Akan Force. You, you can look uh, at his work. He's uh, explaining all the agile thing with Lego. It's, it's really great. Uh, agile, values, uh, agile practices values uh, uh, pair programming, programming on the same desk, uh, conversation on uh, 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 Spontaneous conversation, uh, discussion on, uh, on, a, on a whiteboard, and something like that. And uh, when uh, when we uh, we uh, work uh, with open source, we speak about distributed teams, and uh, we we can see that all the practices, uh, all the agile practices, 
uh, are in favor of collocated teams. So how we are working with uh, distributed teams. So nowadays we have a lot of means uh, to to work uh, distributed. So at Innovance we we are pretty distributed. We are, we are you can see here uh, uh, an extract from our wiki when you, we show uh, where all our collaborators are located. So in China, in India, in France, uh, in Montreal, in Canada, and the U.S. So we are pretty uh, spread around. And so, uh, what are the benefits of uh, distributing? So, the best uh, interest of being distributed is to hire the talents where they are. That's very important because uh, sometimes uh, we, we often we need to find uh, <laughs> good talents for <laughs> for helping us uh, contribute and develop our softwares. <coughs> and so we need to uh, to hire them where they are. That's very important. And also, uh, what is important is that um, we we allow people to work from home, and it's very uh, uh, we, we gain a lot of time without uh, travel to come to the office, and uh, it's very efficient for for the employees. And uh, the, the other, other things about distributed teams, uh, we've heard a lot about uh, it works when you are a team, all co uh, a collocated team. It works when uh, all people are remote, and uh, we have a mix uh, between the, the two. Yeah. That's the worst, in fact, in theory. <laughs> in theory. <laughs> because you want to avoid uh, uh, this kind of uh, the two uh, speed of communication. So uh, we we'll, we'll see uh, how we cope with this. So some difficulties. Uh, you, you've seen that we are spread uh, over several time zones, so we need to find uh, overlaps to uh, to do uh, the the meeting, to do the the daily stand up, for example. So we need to to decide uh, within a team when is the daily stand up. It's obviously not at the beginning of the day for uh, for every uh, every uh, person in the team. Um, uh, we we, uh, we have some some troubles with uh, facilitation activities. Uh, when you you start a retrospective, you 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 are looking for uh, icebreakers to to set up the the, the the mind the mindset of the of the team to 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 to, uh, to have some some activities to, to to work together to 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 start the the meeting. And when you are remote, everybody is. Uh, behind this computer and you say, okay, what, what kind of icebreaker I can find to <laughs> help them? To, and it's, it's, quite a, it's quite difficult for us to, to, to find, find activities on, on this part. So it's, it's quite difficult when you, are, you work with remote people and you try to, to adapt uh, Agile on, the, on this, uh, this part. So yes, like I said, we, we try to avoid uh, two levels of communications, the one the around the coffee machines and uh, the one uh, with people uh, working remotely. So what we do is that we, uh, we push people to work remotely even if they are at the office. So this time they, they are used to, to work remotely and they understand what it means to be alone at his desk. And, um, <coughs> this way, uh, we try to have everybody uh, feeling like they are remote and uh, thinking how to to communicate with the others like they were remote. So, m basically, that means we we want uh, to focus and to uh, use the electronic tools to communicate. So, chat, um, emails, wiki, uh, this kind of tools, and uh, that's very important to. Uh, one thing that helps is uh, people from uh, from uh, an, an office will also work from home from time to time. So they will not forget that uh, uh, when you are at home, you will not have the, the conversation uh, at the coffee machine. And you need to, to have explicit knowledge, and not tacit knowledge. Uh, you, you cannot say, OK, I, I've said it. Uh, oh, yes, where? Oh, no. You've said it, and you, you, you wrote it sometime. Um, so you, you, you need tools? Yes. So we, we force people at the end <laughs> to use instant <laughs> messaging to be in contact in permanence. Uh, we, we are all in uh, chat rooms by teams 
Uh, each team has its own chat room and they, they say hi in the morning, like, like they were around the coffee machine. They discuss from things that are nothing to do with work and they, they socialize at the end uh, around the chat uh, systems. We do uh, our scrum, uh, daily scrum meetings uh, in video or in audio, depending on the teams. Uh, some teams prefer to see each other, some teams uh, are good with uh, only audio, but every day they, they have some contact. Uh, it's better for video in, on my mind, but some teams are, have decided <laughs> it's better in audio, mainly because it's uh, making their computer uh, too hot <laughs> to decode the video. <laughs> uh, of course, we we try to um, to deliver information for emails. We try to um, to to store everything in the wiki. This way, we uh, we can have uh, the newcomers uh, aware of uh, what uh, has been decided, what has been uh, <coughs> uh, work on on, uh, on previous uh, sprints, on previous uh, products. And of course, we, we are using uh, Software Factory. It's uh, our own tool uh, that is mimicking the um, way of working in OpenStack. So we, are, we have uh, our own uh, code review system uh, based on Garrett. We have uh, our own uh, continuous integration and uh, bug tracking. So everything is tracked and is uh, available. And people are aware of what is happening uh, on all the teams, in all the teams. So you're, we, are, we are using uh, Software Factory that is a, uh, a solution that we, we provide to our customers uh, internally. So we can say we drink our own champagne <laughs> see, because we are French, so it's, it's great. And it's, it's also uh, an important thing that uh, uh, it's transition to the social legislation. If we want to, people to collaborate uh, and to, to work together, they need to know each other, they need a strong, strong, uh, uh, strong uh, 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 links between, uh, between, uh, between each other. So we need to, to set up full, full company meetups. Obviously, Open, OpenStack, uh, OpenStack Summit is uh, one opportunity to set up a, a, a full company meetup. Uh, not full this time, because we are, we are only uh, 30 here. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of people involved in the, in the summit. We need to, to set up team meetups, uh, uh, able pe uh, people to, to work together in the same room, in the same place, and then they, they can work uh, easy, easier when they are. They are uh, remote uh, or spread uh, over, all over the world. Yes, that's very important that the team, when they, uh, they form, that they meet for the first time physically, and then it works uh, easily uh, uh, remotely. And we, are, we, are, we have uh, new offices in, uh, in Paris and Montreal, and we, are, we have shoes offices uh, that we are able to, to uh, uh, we are able to organize meetups in all, uh, all offices, and we are organize re regularly uh, meetups about uh, uh, technology, t t uh, softwares, or and so on, or other things uh, that are professional or not, uh, to, uh, to gather people together to help them uh, work together, know each other, uh, better work together. But it was an event when we are we have take the new offices. They were using the uh, um, stickers to, to to decorate all the all the offices. It was uh, quite fun. So we recruit uh, some uh, some person. How we do this? Yes, yes. <laughs> so um, I'm just talking about uh, the the development team, the software development team. So the, we, when we select people to, to, to join our team, the, the main uh, criteria also to work uh, remotely or to work in our office is a high level of autonomy. That's very important for us because we, we need people uh, to be uh, in charge of their job and to uh, act and uh, interact with uh, the open source community. So we, we need to be autonomous. That's very important. That's a key thing. And, and after, the, the next uh, very important thing is the technological skills. Uh, uh, finding OpenStack uh, skills is very difficult because the project is very new. So basically, what we do is we uh, look for the skills that are useful for um, developing in OpenStack, m meaning uh, Linux, knowing storage, networking, operations. 
the languages, Python, uh, the, this kind of, and then we train the people to work on uh, OpenStack. And also, what is very important to be able to work on OpenStack is to have a, a good exposure to open source uh, uh, contribution. So it's easy for the newcomers to uh, to interact with the community, to to be able to to chat in the mailing list, to to go in IRC and discuss with with the guys. That's something you you need to learn. It it can be. Uh, you, you you can train people to 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 achieve this skill, but it's better for in our opinion if we uh, have them at the beginning. So it's a mindset also, so it's it's easier to to look for this kind of uh, expertise uh, first. Also, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Can you use your mic? Everybody will listen. Just was a quick question yep. when you said a senior. What do you consider senior? If you could mention that. Se you say senior. So what? Yeah. What you? What? What do you consider a senior? Yeah. Uh, program? Senior for us is that someone that has a prior experience and contributing to a large uh, open source project, and to uh, can be uh, autonomous, uh, in the sense that uh, they don't need uh, the help of others to go to do their job. Okay. So it can be a very young people. In fact, so it's not uh, <laughs> just a <laughs> case of age. <laughs> <laughs> There's another question. Yeah. yeah. Ah, sorry. Sorry, you. you, you. <laughs> we don't hear you. How do you check for the high level of autonomy during the recruitment process? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> uh, uh, asking question about their behavior yeah. when they face uh, a, a problem. What 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 they will do mm -hmm. facing that? Uh, it's 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 generally uh, one or two questions are enough to to understand what they need. If they need uh, really a, a lot of help, uh, and they don't know how to ask for help, it's uh, it's quite interesting. Yeah. If they know how to ask for help, okay, you you know it's not a problem. So so yes, usually when they are not senior, we we have them. Uh, work in our offices, n not remotely. That's very important because it will fail if we have people working remotely that are too junior. So we, we bring them to uh, our offices uh, in Bangalore, Montreal, or Paris. And then after, I don't know, six months or one year, we can go, go and work remotely. OK. So they can start in one of our offices here. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can start also if you want. There's a, a link. <laughs> oh. So now you you you've been recruited. You know, it's your one-day job uh, in the company. So uh, now you you know that you need to wear a tie to join join the company. <laughs> no? no? Okay. It's in, yours. in fact, if uh, the guy is wearing a tie during the interview, I'm not hiring him. <laughs> <laughs> discrimination it's, it's <laughs> so, so we um, for the onboarding process what we found a very uh, important is to provide a buddy so what is a buddy a buddy is um, someone in the team that will help the newcomer to find his way uh, in advance so as uh, all people are very autonomous they work alone on their side so it's not easy when you arrive and to, to find your place so this uh, buddy uh, program is very, very important. It's key to, for a good integration, a good um, to, to find uh, your ways in, uh, in uh, the communication, find the right people. It's very, very key. Also, we, we designed a, a program to train people to, uh, to work in OpenStack. So it's very important uh, to... Uh, to have a good reflex because all uh, open source projects are different and OpenStack is a big project. It's one of the bigger open source projects. So it's, uh, it, it has its own, uh, its own rules of, uh, for uh, contributing. So you need to know how to do your uh, code reviews, which tools to use to prepare your environment to be able to debug your 
your new development or your bug fixing? Uh, what uh, what are the usage uh, in the mailing list? Where you can uh, ask for help? This kind of stuff. And the training program is designed to to help the newcomers do their first patch and their first uh, commit and have it uh, accepted. So uh, as soon as the the patch is accepted, the training program is uh, finished <laughs> for the newcomer. <laughs> So that's the idea. So it can take, uh, it can be very quick for people that are already uh, contributing to OpenStack, uh, that are coming to the company. But for people that has never, uh, have, have never, sorry, um, contributed to OpenStack or to any open source project, it can take uh, between uh, I don't know, two weeks to one month to <laughs> to succeed uh, having a, a patch accepted. <coughs> and for people who, are, who will work remotely, mm. uh, they will spend two to four weeks in, a, in one of, of the office uh, to, to, to meet the people, to know the people, yeah, yeah. to work with them. Yes, it's important to have a physical link at the beginning of a new... Because yeah. uh, after meeting. we will forget them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's also a, a, a big, big, uh, big effort uh, put on the talent development. We've said we, we will... Uh, uh, try to hire people that are experienced on uh, open stack or on open source uh, uh, development, but uh, we uh, we know that we will not recruit all the the rock stars in the in the open stack project. We don't want to. Uh, yes, we want. We do. We want this. No, no, there will be conflict. <laughs> <laughs> so we will train uh, train people to to become. Uh, 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 major contributors to the to the project. So there's a uh, an effort uh, put uh, on talent development in the in the in the teams, and uh, we will uh, ask uh, experienced developer to to uh, train uh, other developers in the team. Experienced in a field. It's uh, sometimes it's uh, it's a guy of uh, 20, uh, 22 or 23 uh, years old. We will uh, uh, transmit uh, his uh, his knowledge. It's not a uh, it's not uh, experience in one field, and we will work to, to transfer that. Uh, we will have uh, some, uh, some other things to, to say on this one, I say. Yes, internal training. So we, in each team, they can decide to transfer their knowledge, not only one-to-one, -one, but to, to have trainings for the other member of the teams. That's a process that we, we try to, uh, to, to put in place uh, uh, continuously because uh, you need to learn new projects, new skills, new uh, tools you want to, to, to try or to... to and each sprint we, have a, we, are, we, are, we will have a dedicated time uh, to this internal training uh, program. Okay. Um, we, we speak about Agile and uh, uh, obviously, the, uh, the Agile uh, team is uh, uh, not so big because we are two, one in Paris, uh, one in uh, Montreal. And uh, we have uh, built a, 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 a guild uh, composed by a person from t uh, team to team to, uh, to share their knowledge about Agile, to uh, learn how to develop their skills about Agile, to understand what is uh, important or not in uh, certain behavior in their teams. And so they are, they are supporting their teams to, uh, to improve their practice, to develop their practice. Uh, that, uh, that, uh, that's already been said in the, in the, in the room. Uh, we are continuously learning to improve uh, our, our way of working together. So it's really important to have this. So oh, the pace, pace is very important. So we, we have um, a fixed uh, release uh, way of working in OpenStack. Every six months we have a new release. So it's uh, we we base our pace of uh, inside the teams on this uh, rhythm. So the idea is to have uh, uh, three, every three months releases of our uh, projects. In fact and uh, to have uh, a two-week sprint. It's easier, uh, it's easy in OpenStack because of these uh, fixed uh, uh, rhythms. In other open source projects, it can be very difficult because you, you don't know uh, when you, the release will happen. And uh, this, this helps a lot uh, doing uh, 
Our is, the, the difficult part is to have this understood by the marketing department, but <laughs> because they, we need to, to be uh, aligned on this date and we cannot uh, uh, change them and we cannot uh, decide w when they will arrive. And so yeah. it's easy for, for development, but not for marketing at the end. Yeah. They, they will adapt to the, yeah. to the reality. <laughs> uh, Open source? Yeah. We are doing open source? Yeah, we are doing open source. So basically, we, we are dealing with uh, mainly all our development are done in open source. And we push this uh, even further. Um, when we work in an open source project for, for our customers, we, we don't put uh, a patch in production that has not been merged upstream. So that's very important for us. That's also a key differentiator we, we have when we discuss with our customers. And they, they understand this very well, except when this is for them, because <laughs> they, they, they want uh, their feature, they want their stuff, but they don't want to share it. Uh. So wh what we do, in fact, if they don't want to, uh, to, to have their patch merge uh, upstream in the project, we charge uh, four times. So <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> that's a good way to do it. And in OpenStack, in fact, w if the, the customers they are, they are understanding this very easily because uh, the project is moving very, very fast. If we want to maintain a fork uh, for them, it will be very difficult, very costly. And uh, that's why we charge. It's, it's not because we want to charge uh, four times be for uh, uh, ethic reasons, but it's because it will cost really uh, four times uh, the price. So OpenStack in this uh, era is helping us uh, change the uh, mindset uh, of our customers. Yep. Some, some of them uh, already you, uh, tried to, to fork some, some things and uh, realized uh, six months later that it was really a, a bad idea. So, mm. so it's, it's helping us. <laughs> and uh, so uh, the, 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 the question I have heard about uh, using Agile and doing open source is uh, you, you don't know when it's done. And in Agile, you, you want to know when it's done, how we do it. Sure. And of course, it's, it's difficult in uh, the case of uh, OpenStack because having a patch merge, it can take a long time. So at the end of a sprint, you can have uh, developed your patch. You, you can have, uh, have uh, submitted your patch. But uh, it's not merged already. So the definition of done that we have is that the patch is submitted. And so we have to follow uh, during the next sprints uh, that the patch will be accepted or not. It will be uh, some extra load for the sprint to continue to follow uh, the life of, of the patches. So two things that are not really uh, agile. We will uh, have uh, several things in progress because we will have uh, several patches. And uh, they, are, they are all uh, uh, in, uh, in a different uh, status. And uh, so we will not focus on one thing. You will need to, to follow the, the work you, you, you've done before in a, in, a, in, a, in a previous sprint. It's not so easy. So yes, usually uh, developers can have uh, around uh, six or 10 patches uh, in parallel waiting for approval. Yes. How, how the testing works? Yeah, can you use, use your mic, please? Yep, please. Yeah. How the testing works in this case? Well, two weeks. Yeah, we have prints of two weeks. Yeah. But uh, you cannot test until your merge happens or like your patch is accepted in upstream or like when you start the testing of your... Yes, the, the idea is that we, uh, we uh, define the patch, uh, the, the definition of done is when the patch is submitted. It's not when the patch is merged. So after in the following sprints, we continue to follow the status of the patches and we we continue to work on them if someone asks something. So we reserve some time during the sprint to continue this uh, background work, we can say. I, I thought that idea of doing the 4x, the price for a uh, unmerged patch was a cool one. Did you come up with that number just, did you have any um, metrics that said this is four times more expensive from a development standpoint or did you just find a pain point or just pick a number? No, it, it was just, a. Uh, we, we don't have a measurement so for no, this. No. It, just, it, uh, it was it, uh, the, the, the four times figure uh, emerged in a, in a meeting with a customer. And 
uh, it's four times was enough to, to, to let him uh, uh, change his mind. So you should it's have asked for eight, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so at, at, uh, we, are, we are building solutions based yeah. on, uh, on open source, and we are contributing to open source. Mm -hmm. And uh, so yes, we we are mainly uh, doing uh, OpenStack development. But on top of OpenStack, OpenStack is a technology framework. So we develop uh, solutions for um, our customers. The first one is service provider cloud. It is to be able to uh, become a service provider. In, um, internal service provider or uh, public service provider uh, by adding uh, on top of OpenStack some CRM, some uh, billing system, some uh, uh, e-commerce uh, to, to buy uh, your uh, instances, your storage, etc. And we also uh, work with a lot of customers around the uh, software development. So we build, like I said, a software factory uh, uh, to reproduce the workflow of uh, OpenStack, the OpenStack development. So it's it, uh, all, all, of, uh, all those things uh, 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 gives uh, some troubles to our product owners uh, it's good because it's not only uh, software done internally. Yeah. So it's your own thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so usually we, uh, the, stake, the usual stakeholders are users, executive, marketing, techs, uh, research, etc. But uh, when we, we deal with uh, open source project, there is a new. Uh, stakeholder, that's the community. So we discussed a little bit about uh, the schedules, the fixed type schedules, so that's one part of it. But also we need, we need to cope with uh, uh, aligning our products with uh, the roadmap of the project. So that's something the product owner needs to understand. That's something uh, can be difficult for them because uh, they need to follow a little bit what is happening in the design summit and what is happening in the mailing list and follow a little bit uh, of this uh, activity and it's, uh, it's not so uh, common to have a product owner that have uh, these skills uh, to, uh, to, to follow uh, open source project. And so we are, we are trying to, to do uh, Agile with our customers. Uh, some of our customers are trained to, to do Agile internally, so it's easy to, to explain to them the benefits of, of doing this. Uh, some are not so, uh, so trained with this, and they, are, they want their big project, they want their the big thing, and they don't really care when it will be done. They say, okay, we need this in six months. It's uh, very far away in the time. Wow. And um, they, are, they are not so clear about what they want. So we try to, to work with our customers, and the first thing we... Uh, it's not exactly that. It's not the first thing. But uh, we, we, <laughs> we can try with this one. <laughs> So it was the solution for our customers. Yes. So the idea is that we are using a lot of uh, continuous integration. Uh, we are dealing with a continuous integration on OpenStack and other uh, open source projects. We integrate them in our, open, uh, in our continuous integration systems. And we provide our solution this way to, uh, to our customer by uh, customizing the deployment and customizing uh, uh, the, the solutions for them. And yes, uh, I remember why I've changed the order. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then the, if, if some uh, person were, were present to the, the presentation of uh, our, our VP, uh, our product uh, VP uh, yesterday, he, uh, he explained that uh, at the end, the, the customer decide if he pushed the big red button to, to put in production what, we're, what we have uh, bring to, uh, to him. So I have a picture of the, the big red button for those who wanting it uh, yesterday. Uh, and the, the, the thing we, we are doing also, it's the, the first thing we do with, uh, with the customer, it's, uh, we've, we've called it the discovery workshop. It's two days. Two days where we, uh, we bring in the same room users from the, the client side, developers, person who will, who will use the, the cloud to, uh, to, to do some development, to develop solution for the users and operators. Uh, people who will uh, uh, operate the cloud, operate the infrastructure. And we will uh, bring uh, all, the, uh, all those people in the same room for two days to uh, help them uh, define their project. And uh, it's really interesting to, to have all those guys in the same room. And we, uh, we bring also people in, uh, inside our, our events 
uh, from operation, from development, uh, and from uh, the product side. And uh, they will, uh, at the end of the workshop, have a, a clear view, a shared view of their project, prioritizing uh, uh, the, the feature, and we can uh, uh, define the, the next milestone of their project. And uh, then we can start uh, with a, a, an iterative uh, process and deliver, deliver uh, different things uh, every two weeks. And uh, the users will uh, try the, the things we, uh, we deliver uh, every two weeks. So they will learn how to use the, their cloud, and sometimes they will reprioritize, change the priority of the, of the feature in the project. Yep. So we're struggling with that in our team on a two-week cycle in that we do try to make contributions to OpenStack, but we find that it takes longer for those things to be accepted than two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> So, I, so it's challenging. Yeah, that's what I said before. It's, uh, we, we continue to follow the, the patches for the next point. The definition of DOM is that the patch are submitted. So, and we, t we work on them and we, uh, we will uh, have them accepted later. Yeah. And when we, uh, when we deploy a, a solution for one customer, for example, the, the software factory, uh, we have already a, a working version of it. We don't need to do uh, additional development for a, a, a big part of the thing. It's only a, a deployment, only, uh, and be sure that it, it only works well in their, uh, in their environment. Sometimes there are additional developments to, to, to have in the project, but we have uh, more time to, to deliver it. We don't need to have it uh, for the first sprint. Usually we parallelize the uh, deployment sp uh, sprint and the development sprint, in fact. So the meeting you've in the room with the customers before you kick off that release, uh, is that when you do all your stories, you create all your stories, you put them in the bucket, and then basically if, if customers want that those stories moved, you can move them in each sprint? In, in fact, during the workshop, we uh, prioritize uh, use cases. And then, during the design sprint, the first design sprint, we uh, cut these use cases in uh, stories, in fact. Okay. Yeah. But it's, it's during this workshop is when you decide with your, with your stakeholders exactly what's going to, yes, a, an idea what's going to happen during the release. Yep. Yes, exactly. The yeah, use exactly. cases, what are the priorities of uh, each uh, use case? Yeah. And what, what, what were the ones that are the most important? Okay. W one other question on that is in what, what, you, what you mentioned, and I think you've said it a few minutes ago, on what you consider uh, done for a sprint. So I think what the, my colleague said here was he mentioned about two weeks is, is quite difficult. Yeah. So you're saying that to, uh, in how you're getting around the two weeks is that once the implementation is delivered, uh, you just move on, and then uh, testing and so forth can happen after those two weeks, is that correct? Or did yes, I that's correct, but only on the development side. On the deployment side, we, we have products that are tested, that are very stable. Yeah. So if we, if we are in the scope of configuration of our actual uh, solutions, we don't need to have these uh, patches accepted upstream because the product is already, the solution is already capable of doing what the customer wants. Okay. So yeah. that, that's different. So that's why I said that during the deployment sp uh, sprint, we use yeah. our solutions, and these solutions are, are ready to be deployed. So we don't need to wait for patches to be accepted. Okay. All right. Thank you. But didn't you say that you're 100% upstream? Yes. So how, what if something gets rejected, or what if it doesn't get accepted? Ah. Yeah, that's a good question. So, <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah, it is. So, w when we, we said it's uh, the definition of done, people are, we try to have um, uh, engineers and uh, contributors in all the areas of OpenStack. So, we work closely with all the projects, the core project of OpenStack. So, we can uh, discuss if this, uh, this is the right approach before starting to develop a patch. So, we have more chances to be accepted at the end. So we try to minimize these uh, rejection problems. But it can happen, so we need to work again and uh, uh, start the whole cycle again. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, follow up on that same question. Uh, our experience has been that when we have something that gets rejected for whatever reason, uh, that we don't put that back in the sprint to do. We put it back in the product backlog. Uh, and 
start over and put it into a different script. Um, what has your experience been when something gets rejected like that? It depends why it's rejected. Yeah. Uh, if, if it's rejected because, uh, because it's, uh, it's an implementation problem or it's, uh, it's, uh, we, we've not doing the, the, the right thing or we've not seen the, the, world, uh, the world picture of, uh, of, your, of our contribution, it's probably uh, interesting to, to, to challenge the implementation and, and try to adapt and, and do it another way. If it's, uh, if it's uh, the feature that, uh, that, that, that is the, 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 the problem, uh, we need probably to, to, to think about it, and uh, it's, it will be back in the product backlog. It's, it's uh, another problem. I think we are done, <laughs> as you can hear, and I, I, I don't know how to stop it. <laughs> um, uh, to sum up, yeah. to sum up what, we've, what we say today, it was, uh, it was really short. Sure. Uh, it's, uh, Agile is a, is a common way of working uh, for our team and it helps us to, to work with a distributed team and it helps us to work with the, with the project, with the, the different open source projects. Mm -hmm. So it's really important. Uh, I would like to insist on, on the onboarding and yes, socialization. Yes, onboarding is very important to, to form the teams and to, to have a, um, a good socialization is key to, to have a performing team. So it's very important to, to put uh, some energy, some effort, some investment uh, on travel, on bringing people together. That's something that if you avoid this, you will have trouble, in my opinion. And the uh, OpenStack is a good opportunity because yeah. there's the summit every six months yeah, yeah. help us to remember we, we need to, to gather. We are doing a real, yeah, open, real source. open source. Yes, and that's our DNA, so that's <laughs> how we work. So we think if that's the, the right way to do. <laughs> and uh, the last thing, we are trying to, to create and nurture uh, an agile and open source culture in, uh, culture in, the, in the company. And uh, I think it can be uh, interesting for others to, 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 to try to, to adapt the, the way that uh, the, the OpenStack project works inside their company to, to think that if they are all the IT uh, were uh, li like, considered like the OpenStack project, it can be interesting to, to think about it, how they can work together in the, inside their companies. Okay. And so we are done. Yeah. I Thank you. Uh, I don't know if we can take some questions. Or yep, we, we, we maybe can take some questions. I, I have this for the first question, but there are already uh, some questions, questions so it's, it's <laughs> quite it's, it's not really fair. But I have also candies. So, if you want a question? No? No? I will yeah, keep. Yeah, yeah, one. I will keep the duck. There's one question. Yeah, you have the duck. <laughs> With um, two-week sprints, how much time do you take in between sprints for sprint planning and retrospective? And um, do you have to do any care and feeding of your backlog to, to keep those two-week sprints? Uh, it's, uh, it depends uh, between teams, but there are the, uh, it, c certain teams are, are done with their planning and, uh, and their, um, their review in uh, two hours. Uh, some needs more times. And sometimes uh, the, the fixed uh, time box of uh, one hour for the retrospective is not enough and they, they need more time. So it, it depends, but it's uh, one or two hours for each, uh, each uh, c uh, ceremony. It's in English also, yeah. Okay. Yes, we are out of time, but <laughs> I still have candies. So if you want some, <laughs> you can have. And there are the other ducks in our, on our booth uh, in, uh, uh, downstairs, so please, have candies. And thank you very thank much. You. Thank you.